Hi everyone, this is Greg from Greg's Whiskey Guide, aka okay, Grégoire for the French audience. Bonjour. Um, it's good to be back and it's good to be back with a big one, a big video about uh, better late than never and better take your time to do that. Whiskey of the year 2020 or the impossible or almost impossible quest for the whiskey of the year. Why this subtitle? Because uh, year 2020 has been a bit special, as you know, COVID-wise. Uh, and this is also a special year tasting-wise, because as whiskey fairs were almost all closed in my country, in France, uh, at the exception of one, I, I wasn't feeling very well, so I didn't want to take risk being a person with health issues. Uh, and also no master classes uh, live I mean uh, so basically a hundred of fifty to make things shorter hundred of fifty probably tastings less than usual years to assess whiskies uh, but there has been an awful lot of zoom tastings and online master classes etc but you had to purchase the whiskies prior to that most of the time you have to be available those days to do the tasting etc so i did attend to some i did also participate to uh, uh let's say some press invitations where you get the samples for free yes uh, and you try them uh, online or when you cannot you try them by yourself uh, but I did treat them like uh, everything. Yeah, this is not to forget something important. Uh, also, I wanted to tell you, uh, yeah, I had health issues, but you know that. This is, I tried to make it as simple as possible. And I tried to, uh, because uh, I even have to retry and I postponed this because I, I received some samples and I absolutely wanted to see if they fit it in there or not uh, because they are rare samples for friends to start with um, also I didn't rank the whiskies by category uh, or availability I'm sorry about the second point but I wanted to, uh, to do it as sincere as possible and also as uh, it came across for me I mean I received things, I bought things, I swapped things uh, but all in all I tasted things at the same level for me so if I was going to, to uh, go by availability this half of the list I probably didn't make it and that probably some of you won't be able to find I'm sorry about that but on the other hand, if you're really searching for it, if you do the contacts and I can help you maybe if you want, because I'm in touch with some of these companies, uh, there's a way to get some uh, whiskey from them to buy it. Uh, maybe to get s free samples, I cannot promise, I'm not sure at all. Uh, if you're not a blogger or stuff like that, uh, you're not keen to receive these normally and even uh, so yeah um, another thing I I choose only whiskies so it's a yeah it's a big disclaimer sorry to start with forgot to say the word but you will find it in the description please guys read the description as always there's some interesting uh, uh, regarding the video I mean to understand it or to complete information then after interesting it's another thing for you judge uh, I, so I chose only bottles, um, only whiskies bottled in 2020 or most probably matured, uh, matured bottled in 2020. Um, I chose only, and I'm going to go into this, uh, so whiskies that were available, so the big names and big countries, uh, for instance, I'm sorry, there's, no, I'm not going to give the spoiler. Uh, there's some countries that are not re represented in this um, top seven, let's say. There's 20 whiskies there, but uh, let's say there are 13 whiskies awarded and seven or a bit more honorable mentions. 
Um, so, but, but there are some countries that are not there, and there are some countries that are there uh, a lot because I tried a lot of whiskies from them, uh, and it appeared they were to my liking. So that's why you will find them. Then I will put a link in the description of my rating system that I wrote. I have here because I'm going to rely on it to explain things to you. My rating system is different than many others uh, in the ways it goes up to 100 out of 100 and there's even a, a, a something called beyond any category that I can add to it in case it happens. Um, usually this is uh, the beyond any category is used only for whiskies over uh, 96 out of 100 or more. Um, but uh, yeah, I have eight categories. I'm not going to read them all, of course, because they are uh, on in the description. Uh, there's a link in the description. I tried to change it over the years, but now uh, after uh, three three thousand eight hundred or so tastings and, and a lot of tasting notes, even if most of them are not public, because it's an awful lot of time and I, I'm not doing this a full job. I have a full job aside. Um, but yeah, I chose whiskies starting by uh, 90 to, uh, to the end for the uh, awards because 90 is uh, the sixth category that goes from 90 to 93.5 and it's called and then the, the, the comment, general comment to give this rate is excellent to superb, a sure a set and a good gift all the same and uh, between uh, quotes a whiskey with a good technical mastery and balance enough personality and complexity to get down to brass tracks so this is the first category uh, uh, well you will find the the whiskies awarded today and it goes uh, there's a whiskey there the winner which is not in the mind you in the most important categories uh, the best let's say 97 to 100 but it is in the 94 to 96.5 out of 100 and i call it a superior whiskey a must in any a must have in any comprehensive collection and between quotes no doubt this is more than an excellent whiskey generous well balanced and with a memorable finish so you see a bit these criterias but if we go to uh the honorable mentions uh, and i will come to it shortly don't worry honorable mentions start at 87 to 89.5 but i have had honestly i had to start somewhere because otherwise we won't have 20 but 30 40 whiskies it's impossible for a video I, I know it's going to be long already so i i started at 88 out of 100 which is uh which is i think a decent way of starting knowing that in the fifth category you have uh, 87 to 89.5 and it's interesting good whiskey attractive worth buying or collecting between quotes a good whiskey not exceptional but with improved qualities compared to the category below um, under it close to be part of the really excellent ones so it's something that's really good that if the price is okay you get a good value it's not a masterpiece but it's whiskies that deserve uh, a bit of praise let's say okay with uh, i've been <laughs> rambling already too much first one is a sample i received a very so honorable mentions mind you uh, it's a sample i received recently uh, and it's and thanks a lot to foot quick uh, Andy uh, from um, and it's not very far I think it's a five hours uh, drive from where he lives and I am talking also I will show you in a bigger uh, so I received this sample so it's uh, yeah I can put it there it's the collective it's a single uh, no I cannot say single malt it's a blended whiskey <laughs> it's a Canadian blended whiskey uh, from the shelter point distillery uh, shelter point distillery is uh, from uh, Vancouver Island in Canada 
uh, and Shelter Point Distillery who uh, started a few years ago uh, is, is a kind of craft slash experimental uh, distillery that uh, does a lot of things to uh, make um, the, the boundaries between categories uh, kind of explode uh, and as the Canadian rules are different from the Scottish rules even if the master distiller is a Scottish uh, and we'll get along uh, later on with him uh, for a live because I have 13 samples. So, but this one among the only ones that were from 2020 for sure. There's some I have some doubts, so I had only to try uh, those five ones uh, to start. Um, this was the one for me that stood out. Um, it's a bit complicated recipe uh, because. Um, it, first, it's a blended whiskey because it uses barley, rye, wheat, malted uh, barley and unmalted barley. And um, it's the cask are ex bourbon, ex Lefroy quarter cask, ex wine cask, ex virginal casks. So it's a complica complicated mix, but it seemed to work. It's 46% ABV, non chill filtered, non colored, blah, blah, blah. And it's in fact the collective because it's a f a five full-time employees of the distillery that did pick the barrels and Leon Webb did then uh, gathered them together to give this. So this is my uh, f um, first, I mean there's no, there's an order, it's 88 out of 100. So it's, let's say, uh, on the bottom of the honorable mentions but uh, still like i said a, a good whiskey even a very good whiskey right so as usual because it's uh i'm gonna mix bottles that are uh in my collections and samples uh for which i was obliged to do something as i don't do editing i'm gonna show you pictures uh, so i have to pause from time to time sorry but uh it will make things easier for me so up now to the next ones, which are, uh, and you will see a lot today, uh, equally ranked. There's two whiskey equally ranked uh, and uh, stay tuned for them. Okay, so my next one is a French whiskey. And uh, I'm afraid you're gonna be, I'm not afraid, but <laughs> you're gonna be seeing some today. Yes, it's maybe the biggest surprise of this list. Um, so this is the HEP distillery located there in Alsace, in the east of France. Um, and this is a very interesting distillery because, um, and we're going to see it through uh, other versions. Uh, not going to give spoilers, okay. Um, so it's very interesting. This one is the Johnny HEP. Yeah, it's a play of words. Uh, matured in ex bourbon, ex wine cask. Um, don't remember now the, the years, but maybe four, six years old. It's not very uh, old. And this one is really for me the proof. Uh, yeah, I forgot to speak about the prices because I have to go uh, fast. Uh, the collective was sold around 72 Canadian. Uh, yeah, Leon said, uh, yeah, confirmed it was sold initially at 72 uh, Canadian dollars. This one is around 40, 45 uh, euros uh, in France. Not sure it's available abroad, mind you. I'm going to tell you when the French whiskies will be available abroad because there's some special. Uh, distribution um, ways for, for some references. Well, Johnny Hepp, this is one of the most amazing uh, proof that at 40% ABV, probably chill filtered and maybe colored, I'm not sure, you can have some amazingly gourmet floral and fruity profile and uh, this a bit unusual is uh, focused uh, a lot though on, on uh, white fruits and flowers let's say when i say white fruits then no white fruit but i mean white uh, 
yellow peach, white peach, something very uh, young. Um, and the, 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 the flower uh, bouquet is, is exceptional uh, here. And it's really typical from the uh, from this distill, it's jasmine, honeysuckle. Uh, there's even, yeah, I know to, uh, some lychee as well, some mead. Uh, th this is a very particular profile. It's closer to the wine, of course. There's a wine, um, there's a wine cask, white wine cask involved, but I suspect it's also the distillate because I tried other things. And it, this is very, very interesting. So yeah, this one gets uh, 88.5 uh, and um, it is the same rate for the next one, mind you, which will be a German whiskey, boo, very heavy bottle, German whiskey from the Slears distillery in Bavaria. Um, this is the Murdera cask finish. So basically, uh, let me check. It is three, three to six years old. In fact, around four or five. It's, the, it's made of the classic. So it's a new oak version. Uh, single mold. It's a single mold. Uh, and it's the Madera cask finish. It's 46%, non chill filtered, non colored. Around 70 euros, 69 to be precise. Uh, it's batch B0695, for those who want to know. Um, very interesting, very subtle, typical candied fruit. Oh my God, I see the time running. I'm not going to not gonna be able to describe every uh, profile. Uh, I should not uh, of, of it. Uh, this, this is all planned, but I didn't uh, measure the time for each whiskey. But be reassured, I'm gonna do uh, for about slears. I already did some uh, things, I'm, and I'm gonna do reviews of some of the whiskies there. Uh, don't worry, some have already been reviews. You will see, um, and uh, for some I'm gonna group. So yeah, I'm gonna have to be a bit quicker on the some that will go to a series of videos. Um, so yeah, very nice German whiskey, and this is the. Uh, we're still in the honorable mentions. We're gonna be uh, a bit uh, more. Now to uh, we're entering into the 90, 89, sorry, out of 100, and again it's seven joints, so equally ranked. We have four whiskies there, which is huge. Uh, so I'll be back in a minute. So there you have it. It's the three ships, 12 years old uh, from South Africa, the James Sedgwick distillery, uh, which is on the honorable mentions uh, 89 out of 100. And congrats Andy Watts uh, for the Hall of Fame, the master distiller. Uh, it's a refill American oak bourbon cask. It's pitied. Even it doesn't say it, but Andy confirmed me, yes, there's some peat, so I was right. Um, South African single malt, 46.3, it's distill owned, that's why the 46.3 probably. <laughs> it's called the Master Distillers Private Collection, 46.3, yeah, I said it. Uh, around 45, 50 uh, pounds. And I have to thank uh, Tom, aka Whiskey and Warhammer, for the sample of this. And he's a member, and I'm gonna come back to this, of the certified original group, uh, led on Discord by uh, Anthony and Nikki from New Dram Drinker YouTube channel, highly recommended. Um, and it's one of the members, and we do there lots of things we talk. There's also charity uh, auction, there's one check it out about my uh, myeloma at the moment uh, so i have uh, you to find it easily go to any uh, new drum drinker video and uh, watch the links below in the description right um, and or contact them through this channel so they're going to explain how all this works three ships it's a uh, they did older age statement this one is a bit special 
Uh, it has some nice floral, almondy, green elements, some vegetable notes that can be a bit challenging for newbies. But there's something amazing that I called uh, the South African funk in there. Uh, that's not so far from Campbelltown, so yeah, recommended one if you still can find. I, I couldn't, uh, but uh, I enjoyed this this sample. So there you have it. Another nice sample from uh, the 89 out of 100 uh, category, uh, and it's a quite amazing one because it is only four years old. Uh, it's one I came across from the same, uh, almost the same, because it was uh, Anthony and Nikki uh, from uh, New Drum Rinker that sent me the sample. Uh, and also it was, uh, I'm afraid it's sold out now, but it was, uh, you have to double check it. Um, it was something distilled in 2016, but all this in 2020 uh, from the Loch Lomond distillery. Uh, it's the inch fad. You know that Loch Lomond uses uh, a lot of different names. They might change it this year, but until now, this inch marine, inch fad at Croftanga, etc. But it's an inch fad, four years old. It's a cast drink, one single cask. It's uh, there's a bit less than two thousand bottles, and it's a bottle non-chill filtered, non-colored at sixty-one point four, and it was only forty-nine pounds. And it's 70 CL, doesn't show, but uh, this is a shot from the website of the single cask indie bottling company who did this. Some don't like the packaging, I find it stunning. So I'm really uh, absolutely agree with uh, Anthony who did the review. Recommend you, please, guys, check out the review of our new Drum Drinker channel of this inch fat four years old. Anthony did a good job on it. And I really hope this year to uh, to be able to buy me one uh, or several ones because they seem to do a good job. There's a Heaven Hill 10 years old that almost made it to the list. It was just a bit too brutal. Uh, so it, it lost, lost a bit, a few points. Uh, but it was still a good one. Uh, also sent by the whiskey community. I think it was Tom, uh, if I'm not mistaken, or a new drum drinker. Uh, but this one, this one really uh, w impressed me by its freshness, uh, beautiful floral qualities, green apples, some almonds again, some nice spices, but not overpowering and very approachable with a few drops of water, a very nice one. Still uh, 89 out of 100 and now from my collection, this is uh, last year's purchase. This is not exactly core range because it's still a limited uh, edition in a way. It's a small distillery, it's a craft French distillery. There you go, it's the Glen Armor distillery, uh, my favorite French distillery so far. But this time it's a Cornog, and the Cornog describes where is the map, the pitted version of it. Um, and it's called Rock Ear. Uh, and it's from Brittany and it's from there. So, you know, on the, uh, on the uh, Côte d'Armor, north of Brittany. Yes, I'm gonna try not to. It's, it's not easy with all the things around me. Um, yeah, so this is a typically pitted whiskey uh, that can be uh, really uh, tricky in blind tasting because it's not so far from there, style-wise. Um, so yeah, you have everything you like, the, the, the maritime elements, you have uh, a nice peat. Uh, it's 46% non-chill filter, non-colored. Uh, gotta, gotta go quick again, we have so many. It's it's uh, it's really recommended version and some of the cast drink ones and some of the finishes are among the best whiskies I ever tried, even uh, world worldwise. Okay, so but it's the one of the two I have only from 2020, so uh, the others I couldn't cover them here. 
Next one still, because we have four remind, uh, reminder, we have four uh, ex -echo in French, uh, equally ranked at this uh, 89 out of 100, and we're still in our honorable mentions. Edu Gold. Edu Gold is, uh, except the decanter, very expensive ones, it's the high end around 80 euros, 89, uh, less at the distillery. It's often the case in France. If you go to the distillery, it's less expensive. For a 3% ABV, this is something very special. Uh, I believe, I'm not sure if you have examples, please tell me in the uh, description, in the comments. Uh, this is the only example of whiskey I know made of buckwheat, blé noir, or sarrasin in French. Uh, this is over 10 years old. Um, this is from another Brittany distillery, I'm sorry, but among the best, and the, the distillery des Menhirs, which is there, so south of Brittany this time, Mor uh, Morbihan, for the French audience. Um, this is... Uh, very special profile, very fruity. There's a notion of mead there too, but there's honey, I mean, uh, specially. Uh, but there's a beautiful apple profile, which it's close to the ap apple brandy in a way, if you wonder uh, taste wise. Of course, got my notes there, but uh, I'm gonna com come back to it. Um, this, yeah, there's some kind of cider notes, the golden apples. Uh, there are also tilleul, yeah, in French. There's some, not verbena, but there's some uh, infusion, uh, vegetal infusions, uh, things like that. Botanical infusions, I mean, well, notes also in there. So it's a complex whiskey and an uh, unusual one, right? Uh, now we have almost only bottles, so I can go. Uh, last one of the honorable mentions, and I promise uh, I'm done with it, and we're gonna go on what's on the table. A bit hidden, because gotta keep some surprise. Sleers, I'm sorry it's still, again, that German, <laughs> not sorry, but it's, if it's good, it's good, right? And I, I talked about it already on my channel, you know that I love the distillery. Usually what they does, not everything, but I love the four uh, I have in my collection. And uh, guess what? You'll see. <laughs> this is a rum cask finish. So again, it's between three to six years old, uh, but more probably four to five, uh, at least for some. Uh, this one is batch C, uh, 2500. Again, the recipe is the classic single malt at uh, three years old with malted barley and new oak. But this time there's a Caribbean rum finish and I, I learned from the brand ambassador, it's from Jamaica and Trinidad rum. 46% non-chill filtered, all, all you want from a rum finish, the nice coconut, nicely fruity, what do I have here? Uh, a bit of pineapple, a bit of uh, nice vanilla, uh, mm, yeah, a bit of oak, uh, dried fruits, Cane sugar, yeah. Yeah, uh, we have to be quick. <laughs> so yeah, a recommended one, and uh, the finishes are usually very good. That's what. That's my point. Did I forget one? No. Uh, ooh, I'm gonna be proven wrong. I have three more pictures, and the rest is in my collection. Okay, stay tuned for now the top seven, but the top seven, because whiskies are equally ranked, sometimes they gather 13 whiskies. Stay tuned. Okay, so I'm back now for the top 10, if I may say, or let's say top 13 whiskies. So we're starting really on the 90 out of 100 category. So real, we are real now in excellency ter territory for me. Right, first one, and this is a way for me to apologize uh, to the Irish whiskey and the Irish community, if I may say, I don't have to apologize because I don't have to follow the, uh, the, the, the uh, trend, let's say, to do Irish whiskey uh, during the month of March. But I was a bit annoyed, but I was sick three weeks long, so I couldn't taste anything. Um, 
but I finished to taste a sample that I liked a lot. This is a version I had a few years ago because I have a lot of whiskies from this distillery, but uh, I don't have a lot of recent ones because I don't drink often. I have to be honest. My Irish whiskies, uh, I don't know why, but I, uh, it's, uh, it comes across a bit difficult for me. I have to be a special moment to drink them. So I did have the powers 12 years, 12 years old, but it's, it was the blended whiskey was not a single post till. And there is the, uh, I'm not happy of the new packaging. I have to say with gray stuff, but yeah, but this is excellent. Powers 12 years old, John's Lane. So the John's Lane, I learned uh, it was um, James Powers old distillery that closed, was in Dublin, closed, uh, founded in, 1789 and closed in 1975 uh, and that's when they started uh, this, this not its exact version i mean in france we don't have this for a long time only a few years it was previously sold in a tall bottle uh, so this is around 60 euros and you cannot find everywhere here i have to say that's also why probably i didn't get it but uh jim from whiskey novice uh channel sent me a sample uh, earlier on and i really uh i really dig this uh, i really loved it and uh, I think it's one of the most classy uh irish uh whiskies i had just a tiny look quick look uh yeah hazelnut um uh, praline somewhat hard to translate in english bit sovereignty yeah it's when i took the time to really open it, it's it's a bit spirity at the beginning i have to say the same impression i had earlier on uh, about this um but it's it's a it's a nice one and um also it has some elegance it has something extra maybe it's a 46 percent abv that the red breast doesn't have uh it's a bit more oaky more spicy um i've been told they pushed more the 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 the, the, the fruity side on the red breast and the the oaky side on this one I don't know the, the treatment, uh, the char level and all that stuff. Doesn't say it's ex-bourbon and ex-sherry cask, triple distilled. So yes, yeah, single pot still whiskey means it's unmalted and malted barley used. And with this single pot still, we have typically the Middleton and the single pot still notes that are for me the uh, black currant bud. Uh, Blackcurrant bud, it's something you can find also in some unadulterated no additives cognac you have to to know that and cognac from a specific parcels uh, mainly i would say quickly petit champagne grand champagne most probably uh, i have some examples here and when it's not altered with sugar added and stuff uh, and caramel uh, it can be really amazing floral wise and uh, fruity wise so Powers John Lane recommended 90 out of 100. Stay tuned. At 90 out of 100, we also have another uh, whiskey, even two others. Um, and this one is one I tried uh, for a Zoom tasting, celebrating uh, 20 years of uh, Compass Box uh, company. And this is a version, that, a limited one, unfortunately, and uh, quite expensive, I have to complain. Uh, but it has some older content in it that can explain. Um, and it's only 2,226 uh, bottles. And also it's bottle 53% ABV, not 43. Of course, it's hedonism, but hedonism felicitas which is uh, creamy, vibrant, and stately. Uh, stately says the, uh, it, it's the file from the, from the company. It, this is exactly that. It, it's Moorish compared to the regular uh, core range hedonism, and I prefer this by far. But the price is around 
it's sold out now la maison du whisky sold it for 173 euros because there's some old content uh i know it's uh, there's some 19 years old in there maybe older ones uh, i didn't have time to double check uh, but I can tell you it's a mix of North British, uh, Portendas and Strathclyde distilleries. Okay, I'll be back. All right, if you follow the channel, you're gonna know which one is... Uh, this is not gonna be a big surprise for the next one, which is French. <laughs> Again, I'm... This one is uh, one of the best blended whiskies uh, around uh, any country wise, I have to say. This is made by the Varangem distillery, who does the most uh, known single malt from them, Armoric. Stay tuned, you might see it. Uh, here, I mean uh, today. 60% malt, malted barley, 30 Five, as you see, everything almost everything is transparent here. 35% grain, 42% ABV, which is a bit unusual for a blend. But the grain here, and it's a single blend, which is not an official category, but I have to tell you because it's rare. It's wheat made by the distillery, uh, I mean, multi, uh, I mean, distilled by the distillery as well as the as the as the malted barley so it's wheat and malt it's not corn and malt so it's a bit more there's a bit more uh, not acidic but it, it's a bit roundish acidulous kind of grain uh, it's very fruity and floral it's a bit spicy it's very well balanced and 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 it's really one of the best uh, whiskies around. You can find it in the UK through the Gordon MacPhail distribution and in the United States through Heavenly Spirits company, something like that. Uh, not sure you have in every state, every uh, area, of course, I cannot guarantee that, but I know they distribute it. There's a, already a video about it, so uh, about three whiskies from this company, so uh, check it out on, on my channel, please. Okay, we're entering now into uh, the um, 91 out of 100, uh, and it's really excellency there. Execo, yeah, means equally ranked. There are three whiskies I'm gonna present you now. Yeah, we're getting close to the top, top three. Uh, so equally ranked, but I will start, start by alphabetical order. Another one from the same distillery you just seen. Yeah, it's not a surprise for those who follow the channel. It's one of my favorite whiskies of the year 2020. Uh, and it comes with a nice maritime styled uh, bag. This is the Armoric, uh, which is also from Brittany, uh, like, sorry, uh, the. Um, there you go, Brittany, uh, like the braise whiskey, braise means Brittany in, in local language. Local, uh, yeah, it's an exclusive uh, for a maritime festival in uh, Brest, in the town of Brest, that held in 2020. And it's a seven years old whiskey, uh, ex-bourbon and finished in Madeira cask, 46%. It's really very nicely made, super balanced, I have to say, uh, one. Uh, it's one I already reviewed, uh, not sure in English, probably in English also as well. Uh, so I'm not going to be long about it. Highly recommend it. Very nice, very well made, very balanced, sweet one. Everything, the candied fruit. The, the, uh, the nice floral and fruity notes you find usually in Madeira finishes. I love Madeira finishes. Not a surprise. When it's well done. Second one uh, reaching off. Yeah, we can. I'm trying to hide the winners, but. <laughs> Another German. I'm sorry, and you're not over with that. Uh -huh, I'm not sorry, but. And you see the reference here. So, 
Uh, it's the um, it's another single malt with a finish from this distillery, uh, and it's again it's new oak, three years old, and then they add a sherry or laurels or finish, and yes, yeah, from a, a distillery from Bavaria, again 69 euros in France. Beautiful package, beautiful bottle, uh, everything is really made with care, non chill filter, non color 46. Strangely, it's written in German, as the, the rest is in English, and the, the, the cask mentioned, which is Fass, is written in German, so it's Oloroso Fass. Don't know why. <laughs> uh, the, the thing that are here, sealed screened, are in German as well. And as you see, 46. So beautiful one. All you, a slightly different take on, on sherry, but it's still very recognizable as a wee sherry bomb, let's say. Still in 91, uh, so six rank. We're uh, the six rank uh, whiskies uh, that made to the top, top six. Last one but not least, it's a whiskey that I had the occasion to get with a nice bargain, almost 40 euros bargain, otherwise it's around 109 euros. And probably I wouldn't have picked it if it was so much. It's a very unusual one and it's uh, an amazing uh, whiskey that the change of profile quite a lot. Um, I s it started quite brutal, I have to say. Uh, first, if I see the first note, uh, the first uh, score, it's 77 out of 100. Yes, Australian whiskies from the Star Wars distillery. Oh, it fell on the floor. Never mind, <laughs> sorry, but I wanted to show you the map. It's in the south, it's, it's Melbourne, Victoria. The box is gone. Uh, not to f it's not a, a big deal it's a single cask release and it's a sorry french store pick for la maison du whisky one of the big players here if not the biggest uh, so it's only 240 bottles you can see everything there uh, basically it's a it's a four years old right uh, it's made of uh, it's a cast rank as you can see 58.5 uh, it's something that's uh, a bit special. It's made with uh, Australian sherry cask and Australian uh, sherry doesn't have the right to call itself sherry, so they call it Apera. Uh, I was afraid when I opened this, uh, it was a full sherry bomb, but very brutal. It was something like uh, unbalanced Abuna, but with uh, too much youth. But then, as I went, it's probably the fourth tasting now, uh, under the neck pour, it started to change a bit, and then completely, almost completely. And now it has stabilized, I think, I hope, <laughs> we'll see how it evolves. Uh, this, the, each tasting it was uh, rating more, and it was, uh, and now it's 91, um, and it's kind of stabilized around notes that I understand uh, from what I heard. And I tried the 40% and 42 something ABV Nova and two foils. Uh, so I, I have an idea. I'm not a specialist of Star Wars, but I have an idea uh, of their distillery house style, which is uh, half estuary and half uh, something difficult to describe. And it moved from the sherry bomb to something very unusual to kind of estuary bomb with some uh, green banana and then now yellow banana, which is more reassuring. <laughs> uh, notes and it it's gets there's something almost artificial, but it's it's, it's got some solventy style that the distillery has apparently. Um, but I quite enjoyed it to the point where uh, I tried it again yesterday and said, oh my, it's getting even better. So I have to wear this at some point. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, Australian distilleries, uh, about the past, you can go on my website, uh, gregswhiskeyeye.com. But if you want to know about what all the new distilleries do, 
currently go to check out Prestige Liquids WW uh, YouTube channel because Andrew is almost devoted now to 90% uh, of uh, Australian new distilleries. So uh, check it out. He, he reviewed uh, maybe four or five Star Wars. So uh, I think it's worth having a look there. Beautiful bottle, by the way, very sober. Okay, moving on now to, uh, let me check, so this one is gone. Moving on now to um, 91 out of 100, and we got the last photography. <laughs> got a sample here. Uh, and it's another, and thanks to a new drum drinker, certified original, and uh, I, I bought this sample, by the way, uh, for the tasting, and uh, part of it were for charity as well. Um, and this is a new indie bottling company from UK, and it's with an amazing uh, design. And this is Wax House, and I do a Zoom tasting with them on Certified Original uh, Discord platform. Uh, again, check them out, guys. Check New Drum Drinker. They can explain to you. There's lots of advantage to be a Certified Original member. Uh, you have to discover it by yourself. But We tried three samples of Wax House uh, Company, and this one for me really stood out. It's a Glen Rothes. Uh, it's release number two from 2020, uh, 50.7, first field share, but 13 years old, Glen Roth is. And for me, it's one of the most beautiful and uh, very balanced, very quiet single cask of Glen Roth is I've come across uh, these last years. Really very nice, subtle, with the raisins, with the, all these... Uh, the sweet spices that you usually find in sherry cask with a very time is <laughs> well very nice i'm gonna do a review of it so don't worry you're gonna learn more uh, beautiful uh, glen roth is a beautiful space side uh all, unless it's sold out until i, I woke up it, it it went very fast uh, i don't know if i have the number of bottles though no, i don't have it here so it's 2006 distilled, 2020 bottle, uh, RPP, the price was 85 pounds. Not so expensive for a cast strength, even if the ABV is low, but the ABV, the low ABV indicates me it was probably, if it's really a cast strength, not sure, I w it was a uh, tonnage warehouse, and that means a lot for me. That means quiet aging. Now going to moving to the fourth whiskey uh, awarded as the best whiskey of the year, uh, and again equally ranked. It, it the top of the, I have to say the almost top, not the best one, but well, favorite one. The top has been very difficult to 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 sever the one from the other. I retried all those, and they kind of changed a bit. Um, so they're all super good, honestly. Uh, but we're moving on to 92 out of 100, which is high praise. Um, and as you notice, there are not many Scottish whiskies this year, uh, probably because I couldn't try a lot. Honestly, if I could try uh, the special releases, uh, Untold Stories stuff, Port Allen 40, <laughs> Abrora 40, Springbank uh, 21, 25, 17, Madeira, I don't know if it was good, uh, ACBP on another country, uh, 12 from the batch from this year, stuff like that. You could have been sure probably if it's super good they were in the list but i haven't tried them so i can only go by what i tried but talking about scottish distilleries this one and it was not gonna be a surprise for many of you <laughs> you've seen it in other channels of course anok 24 years old before it's gonna be rebranded and getting high in price I got it from uh, my good pal in Germany, Pithead. 
Uh, hi, Frank. <laughs> well, I'm not going to turn to details of, uh, of uh, shipping and stuff, but basically it was around 100 euros. And I, in France, it's 150, so it's a scandal. But all in all, it's not a scandal. At it wor It's worth 150 because 24 years old, 46% whiskeys, natural color, non chill filtered. Usually, uh, these days, you find those uh, around several hundred euros, to be honest, or even uh, way more, like Glenfiddich, Dalmore, forget it, 800 and so. So bargain and probably biggest value in single malt category over 18 years old, I think, most probably. Uh, beautiful Highland style, uh, very subtle, a very uh, very classy, very elegant peat, not peat, sorry, um, elegant, um, grassy style, spicy, highlandy style. Uh, I'm going to review it individually, I think. Uh, it's going to be easier, but yeah, hands down, 92 out of the 100, beautiful, beautiful whiskey. I really recommend it. Grab one when you c while you can. And I'm going to surprise you now because I put it at the same level because just is such an amazing and un unusual profile of whiskey um, and it's only eight years old and it is French again. <laughs> yes, lots of French great whiskeys now that makes me enthusiastic. By the way, pour les Français, soyez là le 31 mars, journée euh, française des spiritueux, euh, organisée par euh, Cédric Ferreira et euh, Franck Napoli et Cédric Ferreira. Et euh, on, va, on va vous parler de spiritueux français toute la journée. Moi, sur toutes les plateformes que je peux faire, vidéo, etc. Uh, it's a parenthesis uh, to support French spirits and there's a, a March 31, uh, uh, many of us French bloggers and uh, French professionals are going to work it to uh, make you know better about what we do, what they do and what we do as intermediates. Um, Michard, the G stands for Jean and Julie, the father and daughter which is a nice uh, family-owned brewery and distillery and th this has is important it's a very tiny distillery located almost in the center of france in limoges michard um, i came across by chance to this uh, uh, honestly a few years ago uh, in a, in a french tasting and I was stunned by the style of this whiskey, which is uh, almost unique. I have... Uh, I'm going to review it individually and I'm going to also speak about it in a resume of the best ones in English. So basically, uh, if you like orange, you have to have this whiskey on board. Every kind of orange, clementine, every dec declination of, uh, of orange fruits you will find there absolutely stunning floral profile as well and how did they do this because they have brewery yeast to start with and also because they use and i have to check in in english how it is called they have a centennial and local and living yeast strain so it's something very special almost unique i'm not sure all the distilleries around the world do that probably some experimental one I'm, I'm sure in europe maybe in the us most probably the closest style i can find from this but this is better it was the first uh, saint george uh, the alameda distillery not the english one saint george the californian distillery spirits um, I tried back in 2007 in John Glazer's lab uh, when he invited me to blend with him. This is the closest thing. It was a three years old single malt. It was the first, oh, one of the first single malt, I think, from this Californian distillery. It was perfectly unknown here in Europe. But John Glazer is very curious and likes to discover things and to share them with people. 
But yeah, 45 euros at the distillery. Uh, I bought it much more in uh, in the platform, and I'm a bit pissed off because uh, it was not very fair from them. But I didn't knew I could buy it from the distillery, and I couldn't go to the distillery, so you will have shipping anyway. But for 45, even for the price I paid 68 euros, it's worth every centiliter of it. And there's a 15 years old coming on in March, March or April, we'll see because of COVID, might be uh, postponed. But there's a 15 years old coming on this year and I'm very curious of it. Yeah, it's going to be one hour, whatever. It's my style of view reviewing. Uh, I know it's not for everyone. I got to deal with it. Okay, moving on now, people, and thanks for being there. Uh, kudos for those who stayed up to this point. Again, I'm going to put timing so people who uh, like to go quick to things will go by categories and ranks and will find uh, easily the, uh, the things they want. Now we're entering into our very best, the top three. And for top three, we have two winners in three uh, rank. 93 out of 100 is getting really serious there. I have two whiskies equally ranked again. <laughs> it's, some will say I'm paid by them. I am not by anyone. But if it's good, it's good. I'm sorry. Uh, 51 slurs, slurs, 51. Yes, 51% ABV as well. And you have the batch here. What is this? This is a UFO of whiskey, like the Dalmore Alexander, uh, King Alexander III. This is a mix of uh, many different cask types. Uh, again, it's the classic three years old uh, with New York plus four finishes Port, Oloroso Sherry, Pedro Jimenez Sherry, and Sauterne. Uh, non chill filter, non colored, 74 euros at that price. It's five to eight years old content. Uh, it's a stunning fruit bomb. It's a stunning fruit bomb. That's all I can say. Um, with a hint of green elements, which are unusual. Um, I talked about it already. Uh, I'm going to do a rundown at some point in English because I did a live show with the, the, the brand ambassador, French and brand, French German brand ambassador. So stunning whiskey worth, uh, really uh, worth it, but equally ranked. We have a French whiskey, haha. -ha. And this company uh, interviewed its founder and really, uh, um, where is it? It's really something that stands out for me. And uh, it's really a company that did brought me back hope in French whiskey again, because I had a bit pissed off by a lot of things that were uh, wine cask driven but not made a good way. And this guy, Emeric Roborel de Clemens, uh, which worked 20 years in the wine industry in Bordeaux. Um, so I'm going to offend you uh, if you don't know. <laughs> it's from here. Um, let's put this away. We don't need it now. This is basically an experiment. Uh, so this is for now the company uses only this is an indie butler, but it's more a refiner than an indie butler. He likes to also present himself this way because he does a, an awful lot of job of uh, working on the grapes, varieties and the domain he has a relationship with to find the best vessel. And I use the word on purpose. When it's a cask, but sometimes it's not a cask, it's an amphora. Like this, we have here a very interesting finished in amphora whiskey. And this producer, uh, this uh, independent company uses basically only the Johnny Hep. It was in touch with them as well. The Hep, sorry, 
Alsacian uh, from the east of France distillery uh, distillate. Uh, so they mature, they uh, mature it in several cask types, including uh, even bourbon, ex bourbon, and then a wine cask, and then the finish is made in here in ex Cabernet Franc. Yeah, not to mistake with the other one. From Domaine de Bellevue, Jérôme Bretodo, Val de Loire. It's a single cask and uh, there's only 550 bottles and only 50 CL, but it's 51% ABV, it was around 75 euros. And this is just one of the most amazing whiskey uh, I've uh, come across, which in some ways is not so far from the old style of uh, Highland, Scotch Highland whiskies from some close distillery like Banff or Glenmore, uh, stuff like that. But on um, the other uh, side of it, it's very French. And this is where the, the, uh, the game is winning. Uh, he wants the game. It's, he managed to keep also the distillery house style, which is very floral and fruity with the wine finish without erasing it. And this is for me the, the real deal. So yeah, Emeric um, Robert de Clemens Brut d'Enfort, Finition Cabernet Franc. You can contact him on the website if you are not in French. Maybe uh, he told me you could ship maybe uh, uh, abroad, especially in the UK. But you have to see with him. Uh, I'm not into those details. Now, second one. Guess what? Second one, and uh, and I was hesitating between this and the other one, 93, 93.5. Really, it was a bit hard to um, to pick. And this was is again <laughs> another Emery Corborel de Climens, vintage 2007, only three years old, but it's a fruit bomb. It's a wine bomb, fruit bomb. Um, it's uh, the Finition Grenache is a great variety of red wine but it is a uh, banyuls cask so it's a sweet wine and it's very rich richly fruity wine again it's sourced from the hep distillery uh, there's only 505 uh, 550 bottles of this 55.5 abv so it's it's cask strength and it's absolutely stunning as well uh, this one is from the domain Cum del Mas. Um, I'm going to review them in English because I talked about them in French in a live show, but I, I need to do a best of French whiskies in English. Honestly, this is the biggest and the greatest surprise of the year. Uh, my favorite uh, indie bottler and my favorite whiskies of, uh, of the year, except there's one other whiskey that beat them all uh, took the time for it again i had to try it several times but a winner is not french the winner is not german the winner is not um, but the winner and yes might be a relationship between my t-shirt now who guessed it? Honestly, tell me. Who guessed it? This is the whiskey of the year for me, 2020, and I got it there. <laughs> well, I did two reviews about it. Uh, one reaction uncorking and one um, getting further into it. So I'm not going to be super long. The video is insanely long, I don't even know if I can upload it like that. I'm going to compress it anyway. So to put a long story short about this one, this is Port Charlotte from Brooklady Distillery, 16 years old. This is heavily pitted Scottish barley. This was uh, an ex for seal 2020 festival, but the festival was cancelled. So it's not written anywhere, guys, that it is a for seal bottling but it is it was sold only now i don't know what it had happened because of three thousand bottle of this 
It was sold only on the website as a digi uh, digital exclusive expression last year. And it, uh, it was only under a ballot. And when I played the ballot, I don't know why, but I knew I will have to pay <laughs> and win it. It was sold, sorry, 150 pounds, so it's quite expensive. And it came across for me with the taxes and everything. And it was even before Brexit completely was uh, done. Uh, it was, it came across 190 euros for me at the end of the day. And I was pissed off because there's no packaging either. And I like to protect my bottles here contrarily to some of you I know but every time I sipped it it was getting better and better it's somewhere on the neck bar here uh, it's not something I'm gonna share a lot because I cannot only have one of these uh, and it's not for everyone it's a pit bomb it's a very complex one the recipe again uh, I'm not gonna go far but it's a lots of things I don't know if I have them in my um, in the file here yes refill hog's head recask into four uh, first fill bourbon first fill bourbon barrels then recask into sauterne sweet wine white wine french uh, also sherry bourbon and virgin oak with three parcels of different kinds of casts so it's a kind of a <laughs> complex stuff I'm not going to go into details, I reviewed it, it's, it's when you relativized the price, because it's farmy, it's, it's, it has some heathery peat, it has some oster style, but also it has some beautifully floral and fruity style. Slangeva. everything you like from there the pit of my heart yes and for me believe it or not having tried a lot of brores over the years it is not from my lab it is pitted it is a mini brora as simple as that so that's why also i awarded it because it's a stunning uh, whiskey that goes over its uh, territory even if it's strongly encored this is a kind of uh, quintessential Scottish masterpiece so this one got finally jumped into the first rank at 95 out of 100 and it is a super score I know this is not something you will be able to try a lot of you guys I'm sorry about that because it was a ballot and probably because secondary market can explode the price of this there's only one reviewer malt activist that did uh, review this except me so far if I'm not mistaken uh, there's also my pal from Belgium uh, Mark that did uh, Mark Ramblings that did cover the previous version of it a few years ago which is, doesn't have the same recipe um, but we're only two reviewers to, to use this and I hope at some point you will come across this I did share it a bit with some people but I let the surprise to them this is everything you want from an isla whiskey complexity strength power subtlety with a few drops of water i just put i can speak of this for hours so <laughs> thank you very much for watching i really hope it was worth the weight and worth the length you tell me um, again i put i i will add the timing uh, stamps to to let you choose and pick what you want and uh, yeah that's it 2020 has some treasures so hoping 2021 will have as well 
have a great day cheers